Sci-fi materials in Blender. How do you make them? Well, the goal of this video is to kind of give you what I'm going to call the ingredients to making sci-fi materials in Blender. So rather than going, hey, let's let's make this exact material, I'm gonna show you a lot of the nodes that I am using to make variations of different materials, specifically in this kind of sci-fi theme. So you can have those really cool angled lines and lighting and colors and metallics and all of that. That's the goal of today's video. So we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so here's a practical example of what I'm gonna show you in these materials. So this is kind of the design, it's incredibly noisy. Here it is just rendered out. Um, but if we can go to the material preview, and just kind of look at it. We have a lot of stuff going on um, and some duplicate materials here, but there's some really cool things happening. And say we can bring the color of this and bring it up, or you know, you have the, uh, the brightness of your, so there's a lot of cool ways that you can make uh, procedural materials very cool looking and Blender gives you the ingredient list. If you ever use JS placement, we're kind of replacing JS placement. Um, you can get this project file on my Patreon. That's going to be linked below. Um, so let's go ahead and we're just going to make that material on the bottom. The one that was on those little cubes is a stripped down version of it. So let's go here to the shading tab and uh, here we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click new. Now with sci-fi materials, they tend to be metallic. Don't know why, unless you're dealing with like glass and HUD elements, which that's not like kind of another whole story. Um, but metallic is kind of your best friend there. And I'm going to bring the color down a little bit just for style. So the node that is most frequently used by at least myself when making sci-fi materials is Voronoi. So let's look at that. And there's two really interesting sockets here. There's the distance and then there's the color. And so we're gonna look at the effect of those here in the bump. So I'm gonna get a color ramp and I'm gonna get a bump node and we're gonna plug the bump into the normal. So I'll plug color into the height. So distance gives you a gradient and distance gives you basically a per perception of elevation if you've ever dealt with these types of things before. So I'm gonna go to Chevy Chev, which is a really sci-fi looking one. Off the bat, we got a motherboard or something. And so here it is, you can see some really cool beveling. And so if you bring up that scale, it kind of makes it a little bit more believable. Uh, but, but this is the pattern of Chevy Chev. And here's why we did a color ramp. You can actually bring that in. Let's bring the height down a little bit. All right, so there we go. We have that. That's Chevy Chev. And what's cool is you can go from F1 to F2. F2 is more detail. So if you want more detail, you can get it. And I mean, we already have greebles, very quick greebles. Um, and you know, with this, you can minimize them, you can maximize them. Uh, you can bring your scale up, something like this. So there that is, there's that already. Um, you're gonna have also Manhattan, which is a really cool one as well. I mean, you, you get some very interesting styles from Manhattan on F2, F1. Again, it's gonna be a less detailed version. Um, big fan of Chevy Chev. Minkowski is less, uh, it kind of deviates from that sci-fi style, um, but you can, you can get some cool stuff if you really want to. Uh, we're gonna go back to Chevy Chev, and we're gonna kind of run with this now. So what we can do now in these kind of materials is stack details. So now I'm going to show you color. So we're going to get a new bump node. We're going to get a new color ramp. And let's go ahead and get a new Voronoi. And let's plug color this time instead of distance. Now color is flat. Now when I said it creates elevation, it's going to create, that means there's a gradient. And so the, what happens is 
that is what the raw output of this Voronoi is. You see how it's a gradient, it's smooth. And so your blacks or your darks are gonna be extruded down, I believe, and your whites are gonna be extruded up, um, thus creating this up and down looking thing. Color is much different. Color is flat, there we go. That is color, it's flat, it's got color, like it's like in the title, but it, there's no gradients here. And that's going to allow, so if I bring up my scale, it's going to allow you to just kind of have these lines because it's seeing the edges of those colors. So it's going to give you something. So here it's giving you these lines, which is very, very sci-fi. If I bring the strength all the way down, we just have this. You can see how the light's still affecting it. Um, but again, super sci-fi looking. And we're going to go to F2 for these lines because that's what I had done in the original. See how they kind of overlap and do all that craziness? It's really cool and really fun to play with. And then you can bring that in. Now we have wild detail. Let's add some more detail. So there you go, you have your kind of Voronoi, you have your randomness, which is gonna do that. If you bring this down, that's kind of your randomness. There's another pattern. So here we go, we're just kind of th throwing ingredients at you here. Um, so I'm gonna, let's actually bring just a little bit of randomness, because that's the way it works. Very cool. All right, let's do one more round of detail. Now, strictly speaking, technically, it's not a good idea to stack bump nodes. There's some ways where you can kind of combine materials, I mean, textures, and you can just plug them into bump, one bump node. That's another day, that's another video. So I know there's gonna be some uh, procedural dudes that are gonna be mad at this. Don't worry, I'm aware and I'm encouraging. Don't always do this, but Eevee is handling it fine right now, so it's good. Now let's do one more Voronoi texture, but we're gonna go to the default Euclidean. And then, of course, color ramp. And we're gonna use distance. And here's why. We're gonna harness that gradient. So here it is, weird. If we bring that scale up, and that scale up, it's gonna look like this. It's not very sci-fi looking, but here's what we can do. What you do is you bring in this color ramp and you're gonna create these dots all around and if you've seen, if you're you know antiquated with sci-fi materials, these dots are cool. And here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna get randomness all the way to zero. Now we have a grid that we can harness and then you can also invert it. Um, so inverting is gonna make it look like going out or going in. So now you created this grid, this color ramp's gonna depict the size of those dots. But now we have wild detail for whatever platform we're designing here. Um, now, okay, we have this, but one thing that you see a lot in sci-fi materials is glowing elements, and it's very easy to do it just on this principled shader. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this, and we're gonna plug that into the emission right here. So now it's, it's white, you can change the color but it's glowing and we have emission strength there, but it's just washing across the whole thing. We need a texture to tell it where to go. So what I wanna do is see these lines right here, the ones that we got from this Voronoi texture. Let's just plug color straight into the color ramp. And then now if we bring in this color ramp here, then bring up that strength, now we have elements of our material that will glow. And we're gonna get a better color than that. And then if you bring this in, you're gonna more solidify them. Um, and then of course, this is gonna depict how many. So you just want a couple really, like that. And here's something cool. If you wanna, it's like, oh, I don't like the position of these. Go from 3D to 4D. That's gonna give you a seed value called W. And now you can change what's going on. You can also animate it, which I've done quite a bit in the past. Um, and there we have it. Now, of course, you can change it. You can use other textures. So let's say, hey, you want these dots to be the thing that light up. Well, very easy. Just plug that into the emission. Hopefully we don't have to invert it. So we'll just plug this into the color ramp here. And then I guess I'll just have to invert. There we go. Now you can make those dots glow like that. I kind of goofed it up, but you get the idea. Um, you can plug different things into the emission to go around now. We have two things left, color and roughness. Color, super easy. I'm gonna pick these larger details, which would be this Voronoi texture to manipulate the color. 
So we're gonna plug distance into the color ramp, plug that into the base color, and then we're gonna to have to deal with that now. In fact, if we use the color socket instead, it's gonna more flatly distribute color in the way that is probably more likable, and then that's way too dark. There we go, now we have something. Now we're getting something uh, pretty cool. Maybe we can add kind of an army green. How cool is that? And then maybe we can make this one more of like a sand. Now we have this going on already, and maybe this can be blue. Sweet. All right, last thing is roughness. Very simple to get your roughness looking cool. Of course, you can just keep it flat. Something I've shown tons and tons of times on the channel is just a simple noise. So we'll plug this into the roughness, and then we'll get a noise texture. Plug that into the color ramp. And I want it to be pretty gritty, so bring your detail to 12. You typically don't want to max out your detail to 15. That's going to be pretty heavy on your system. I bring it about 12. Bring that roughness up and then bring this in. And it's going to accentuate that. And then the black portion is going to mean like fully uh, mirror like that. So you can just bring that up. And then, you know, if that's too much, you can meet them kind of halfway. So it's just a little bit of roughness is visible on your material. But there it is. That is your ingredients to getting some pretty sick sci-fi style materials. Um, it's awesome. It's fun. I do it constantly in my own personal projects. And you can get tons of variation by playing with these texture patterns, playing with this detail, even throwing in some new texture. You do have quite a few textures available to you. Uh, but of course, when it comes into the theme of sci-fi, Voronoi is your best friend and play with those settings, throw in, you know, noise texture, throw in all that stuff and you can make some pretty sick materials um, just on your own and it's fun, it's super easy, not that crazy. All right, I'm rambling. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some stuff here and I'll see you in the next tutorial.